it's uh, so nice being around and among the youth. And uh, I promise you the vibrancy is contagious. So this, despite the seriousness of the topic at hand, I can feel some hope among the youth. Trust the youth of our continent to bring energy and vitality to our pursuit of uh, development. Before me are people that make the every sacrifice of the past infinitely worth it. What a beautiful, promising youth. I hope you are enjoying being in Kigali and will take some time to discover a little more of what Rwanda has to offer outside the Youth Connect Forum. Today, we connect through addressing a vital theme, sexual and reproductive health, mental health, and how frequently the two interact. The Africa we want is one led by healthy, ambitious, empowered, creative, innovative, educated youth. So to get to this dream state, we must look at the full developmental picture, leaving no problem unattended. I applaud Youth Connect Africa Summit and all its strong partners for providing such a lively platform for conversations and sculpting cornerstones for a united youth in the common goal towards Africa's progress. Dear youth, we are living in a decisive transitional period. The current news will at times feel heavy, as if the world itself is coming to an end. A global pandemic with millions of deaths, political conflict across the world, wars, displacement, dehumanization, ever deepening social and economic inequalities, some unkind but pointless words spoken about our own countries, jobs that aim to challenge who we are and our dignity. Food crisis, climate change, but dear youth, despite the, trage the tragedies in all these challenges, it isn't the world that is coming to an end. It isn't the, it isn't the progress of our societies that is coming to an end. It is the period where emerging nations are discouraged to center themselves and prioritize their own growth on their own terms that is ending at last. It is the period where unsustainable development across the world is promoted for the sake of the wealth of a few, despite its impact on the planet that is coming to an end. It is the era where African youth couldn't take center age stage in influencing the future of science around the world, of technology, of education, that already has come to an end. May all that be replaced by a kinder, more equitable world. One where neither resource misallocation or political greed or disease that our systems are unprepared to tackle can lead to conflict and social fragmentation. May you, the youth, be granted by all our present efforts the drive, determination, and wellness to, to thrive and build this world we desire for you and the generations beyond you. Dear youth, despite your vitality, your energy, your optimism, we acknowledge that the problems you face are plenty, some of which are almost unknown to us. The world stage has become tactile screens through which the youth is often targeted with unrealistic, intimidating standards of life and beauty, and the encouragement to engage in impulsive instant gratification, self-isolation, and at times even individualism. We, might not, we must not let excessive screen tapping or decadent fun these ghosts of real engagement replace the organic joys that we once held dear. The anxiety that they, ha they can induce shouldn't win over the enriching pleasures that are still within our reach. 
the joys of a friendly sporting match among friends, of discovering new art, of a healthy intellectual exchange, or voluntary community work and the pure fulfillment it can provide. You'll find that there is a little replacement to truly nourishing happiness in the form of investment in one's mind, spirit, body, and environment. For us, the public figures, whose platforms can effect change, the way forward is clear. The statistic points point to the work ahead. Access to sexual reproductive health and mental health services are impossible to separate from each other. Survivors of sexual violence are three times as likely, likely to experience major depressive episodes as those who have not gone through such a traumatic experience. Adolescence is described by some medical experts as uh, just a chronic stress exposure due to sometimes aggressive hormonal, hormonal fluctuations, rapidly, rapid bodily changes, and social pressure. And in East Africa, 21% of young girls are exposed to mentally damaging early sexual initiation at the risk of disease and teenage pregnancy. An estimated 100 million African, Africans suffer from clinical depression, almost two-thirds of whom are women of reproductive age. It turns out that 1.1 uh, billion women across the world have an unmet need for family planning services. If this number alarms you, it's because it absolutely should. We can only imagine the amount of people that beyond unwanted pregnancies developed disease yearly based on this number alone. These statistics have a palpable impact on many sectors of our progress. For instance, health and, ed and education fuel each other in a cyc cyclical fashion. Many studies attest to this, but let's look at it on an individual level. Look back on any point back in your education and I'm sure all of you were top of the class. Trust you, all parents have been top of the class. Now, as well as you performed, ask yourself how that performance would have been impacted if you had suffered from a disease that kept you from attending class, and this in the long term. How well would you have been able to absorb lessons or to perform on tests? Could this have held you back from evolving from the years at the same rate as your, school, as your schoolmates? The fact is, healthier lives are typically more educative, educated lives. And to live longer and better is to have more time to educate oneself and a foundation of well-being that facilitates processing this learning. With better education, income earning opportunities are greater which means that an educated country has more money to invest in education. Health and, ed and education meet where progress begins. So how do we protect and prepare our youth? Dear youth, I can say honestly that we are actively working to keep you empowered. And you can help us by joining our nationwide and continental efforts, including those of non-governmental institutions and individuals. My, my foundation in Bhutto uh, that uh, I chair started, as some of you know, as a project called PACFA, to hold the transmission of HIV from uh, infected mother to child. But the country has come a long way in this respect, fast. So, in Bhutto Foundation needed to be strategic in its uh, expansion to remain relevant, to effect real change, and have a lasting impact on the entire life cycle of uh, the population that we were, saving, we were serving. And today, we are pleased to, stay, to say that uh, our foundation's family planning campaigns have reached over 600,000 Rwandans. Our adolescent sexual reproductive health and HIV care and prevention services have catered for over 300,000 Rwandans. And 75.5% 75, 75 of pregnant teens in our area of intervention have been cancelled and provided with support to reintegrate into their societies and reconcile with their families. <clears throat> uh, 
And as for the mental health care, we understand that the needs of youth should not just be reduced to hormonal imbalances or trauma. Some problems are structural. How can we holistically uplift you all so that the future is bright for you, so that less of you identify with anxiety for the future and even depression? Imbuto chooses to invest in youth with time, effort, and yes, financial resources. We are pleased to have now provided seed funding for 11 organizations in the field of mental health and adolescent sexual reproductive health. We actively encourage practices which cater to your overall wellness and therefore your mental well-being. Our country's Carefree Day, which is going to take place on Sunday, and I'm inviting everyone, and the development of state-of-the-art sports complexes are examples we can not wait to share with you, including our soon-to-be-launched multifaceted sports facility, a partnership between uh, Imbuto Foundation, the Ministry of Sports, BAL, and the city of Kigali for a modern community playground. Stay tuned for more details on this promising project aimed at targeting specifically for the youth. Dear Youth Connect participant, there is much more I could say to you about uh, the Foundation's work and vision, including our provision of counseling and therapy under our health division and our many educational programs, but I hope you'll find out more during this summit. So instead, I'll take this last moment to thank you for your interest and in connecting with youth from all over the continent. There, there hasn't, there, these aren't the easiest of times, yet the light of dawn has already broken, and we can once again reunite physically to share these moments of necessary exchanges and interaction. Now, dear youth, it's imperative that you be your brothers and sisters keepers and ensure that everyone in need of a helping hand has one extended to them. I trust that you will do great. So again, dear friends, as I bid you goodbye, I hope, in fact, I'm confident that we are all determined to do our part to ensure the healthy, happy progress of our communities, nations, and continent. Our valued youth, thank you for having me today. It was lovely speaking to you. Thank you.